Hi guys, welcome to a very short word electronics repair video. Short by my standards anyway. Uh, yesterday I did the first ever YouTube instant premiere of a word electronics repair video. And about a hundred of us watched it together, all through, with live chat. And we were looking at the various ways to find short circuits in VRMs, high side MOSFETs. And two interesting things came from this video. Well, three. One, it was great fun. Uh, two, that we could use an ESR meter to very accurately and very easily find where a short circuit was in the VRM. And three, one of the guys in live chat came up with an interesting suggestion that I hadn't thought of, of a, a, not a different method, but a modification on one of the methods that didn't work, which may work. So what we're going to do today is let's have a quick look at the ESR meter thing again, because some people are a little bit confused. Not, no, not confused. Some people are a bit unsure about how this actually works, especially beginners, and it is a bit of a strange thing. So I just want to explain this, and then let's have a look at the, the method. And I'm sorry I forgot the name of you who suggested it, uh, but you'll see it in the main. I'm sure you'll come into the comments and say, it was me. So first one, the ESR meter again. So what I did, I took an ESR meter, and I connected across each coil and read the reading, 0 0.156, 0 0.153, 0 0.166, 0 0.04, yeah? And that surprised a few people. Uh, so I'm just gonna now just explain on paper how this works and where you can use this technique and where you cannot use this technique. So this is why the ESR meter works so spectacularly well. We have a very quick diagram, 12 volts. We have the, the VRM phase that has the short and one that doesn't have a short, okay, to ground. Gate, gate, to the pulse width modulator, the driver. But basically we have two MOSFETs like this in series, one inductor coil going in our case to V core. And on the end here, we have capacitors, lots of capacitors on V core. And on here, on the 12 volts coming in, we have capacitors. Lots of capacitors on 12 volts. So that's what we actually have. Now, with a good phase without the short circuit, what happens? We connect from here to here on our ESR meter. Yeah. Now, the ESR meter sends 100 kilohertz frequency signal between the probes. Okay. So between these probes is now passing a high frequency AC signal. Now with 100 kilohertz, this coil will have some resistance, impedance. So whereas your multimeter just sees this as a short, the ESR meter sees this as a resistance. And that's what we're reading across here, about 0 0.14, whatever it was, 0 0.145 ohms. The higher the inductance, the more milliamperes, microamperes, the higher the resistance will be. And that's what your ESR meter is reading. Now, I put it like this, red lead, black lead, but it makes no difference which way around. The black lead, just so we can talk about them, that's why I mentioned the colors. The black lead is actually connecting through the capacitor to ground because this capacitor, or rather these capacitors, because there's lots of them on VCore, to an AC signal at this frequency, they practically a short circuit, they have low ESR. So the meter basically sees this as almost a short, okay? So your 100 kilohertz is going to ground, but the red meat, meter lead is connected to here, and this is connected to nowhere else. Well, actually it connects to phase inside this chip as well, if you want to be pedantic but it's not got any path to ground. So what you see is resistance from here through the coil to here. 
Okay, simple. Now let's have a look what happens when it's a short. So I'll just draw it again for clarity. MOSFET, MOSFET to ground. Yeah. Pulse with modulation driver, yeah? Again, we have the coil. Go to V-Core. And we have capacitors, lots of them, to ground. Okay? Same as before. Go on, I'll draw two since I draw two, drew two on the other one. There you go. In this case, again, we have capacitors on the 12 volts. And we have a short circuit here. So look, look what happens now. Red, black. It's your ESR meters. ESR meter. Okay? Now, we still have, between the red and the black probe, the impedance, the resistance of the coil, which is still about 0.145 ohms. That hasn't changed, it's still, yeah? But look what else we have. We have the black leads connecting via these capacitors, almost short to ground, yeah? And we have the red lead via the short circuit MOSFET, via the 12 volts, via the capacitor on the 12 volts to ground, almost as short as 100 kilohertz. So we're basically shorting the two leads together via ground through the capacitors. It's the equivalent to having a short across here. Yeah, can you see that? So that's why on the one with the shorted phase, it read 0 0.004. Yeah. Really, we're just reading the ESR of the capacitors. So I hope that absolutely clarifies why the ESR meter worked. And spectacularly so. But, but... This will only work when you're measuring across an inductor. Okay? It's, it's the inductance that gives you the resistance at the frequency 100 kilohertz. So on to the other thing. And I don't remember who you were, mate, but please pop up in the uh, comments and let me know as you who suggested this because I thought it was a lot better genius. Okay. So this is what the mystery viewer, not mystery viewer, said. I was using the technique of voltage injection. And what I was trying to do was to determine which of the MOSFETs, the high side that was short, was passing current by getting it hot. So I basically did this. And I'll just draw two phases, but there were four phases. So the first phase, like so, MOSFETs, yeah? To ground. Second phase, same thing. MOSFETs. To ground. And there were four, you know there were four. Then, coming from here, coil, to V core. And coming from here and the other two. Coil to V core. Yeah, all four of them. So that's what we had. I was putting voltage in between here with the red lead. Positive. And here with the black lead ground. Now I could only put, although this is a 12 volt supply rail, I could only put a low voltage in because I have a short circuit. Okay. So whatever voltage I put here will come straight onto the V core. And the V core is probably between 0 0.8 to 1 volt, depending on the GPU. I don't know exactly for this one, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. So I could only inject into here. 0 0.8 volts safely. I couldn't put any more voltage in. And because this has a resistance, the V-core, of about 0 0.2 ohms, which is quite normal for a modern GPU, that resistance meant that the only current I could get into here was about 1.8, 1.9 amps, something like that. I couldn't get any more current in. I couldn't increase this because of damaging the GPU if it isn't trashed already by the, the, the short circuit here. But, you know, I don't want to do more damage. I can't put more than 0.8 volts in. And therefore, I can't get any more current. And because of that, the MOSFET wouldn't get hot. Even with a the thermocouple, I couldn't get any heat generated by it because there wasn't enough current. And what this guy popped up, and there's a little bit of genius. He says, Rich, don't do that. He says, put, put your voltage in here, 
with your red lead from your from your power supply, yeah. PSU. And put the black lead, not to ground, put your negative to here. Okay? He says, now the voltage is, is across the short circuit, but the voltage to ground, there isn't any because there's no path to ground. You effectively put in this to be ground. So you can now put as much voltage into that as you want, yeah, without damaging the, pro the GPU or CPU. And I thought, yeah, man, that's, yeah. Well, well done. I didn't think of that one. I'm sure this guy isn't the first, but he's the first one who mentioned it to me. So that's for you. Now let's prove if your method will find the short circuit. Will this get hot? To make this easier, so I have both hands free, I've just soldered a thick piece of wire onto V-Core. So all these coils, this end, is V-Core. And I've actually put it on the phase that has the short circuit driver. So it even gives the chance of the most current getting into there, okay? So let's now connect our bench power supply to this. And let's see if we can get this thing to go hot and reveal itself. So this is the bench power supply. It's still set to 0.8 volts because I want to prove that we will not damage the GPU no matter how much voltage we put in with the power supply. Uh, so the negative end, the black lead, is not connected to ground, it's connected to V-Core. Okay? The positive end is connected to plus 12 volts. And you can see I have 5 amps coming in. So because my power supply can only deliver 5 amps, you'll see that no matter what I do with the voltage, I can't turn this up anyway. But I just want to prove this to you. So we'll take the uh, voltmeter. Let's just get the voltmeter. And I'm just going to show you, uh, although I'm sure most of you will accept the theory is right. I just want to show you anyway that we have no voltage on V-Core to ground. So we're on volts range. Let's get my meter leads. And in the meantime, something might be warming up, yeah? So I'm on ground, and this is V-Core. And there's no voltage. There's nothing to ground, yeah? So you can put as much voltage in it as you need. Now, as I say, my power supply won't give any more than that anyway because it's a 5-amp power supply. But if you have a 10 or a 20 amp, it may well do. Now, is this getting warm? I believe it is. Let me get the uh, thermocouple because you, you can't obviously see the result of the finger test. Um, one thermocouple. Let's go to one of the other ones first. You see the ambient temperature in my workshop. This is because I'm in the, in the Canary Islands, yeah? That's why we don't have massive heating bills that they complain about in Europe, because we don't have any heating in our houses. The sun does it. We don't have any cooling either, because it doesn't get particularly hot here, normally. 34 point, 35, 35.5, yeah, 36. Let's go to one of the bad ones. 35, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if we go to one further, well, it'll probably be even less. Yeah. So even to the one next to it, we can see clearly we have a hotter chip where we're injecting the current. Okay. There we go. Okay, guys. So I'm now going to declare the in voltage injection as a success in finding this short, thanks to one of the viewers. Now, I will mention something very important, okay, to some of the beginners in particular. You can only do this when you're trying to find a short on the high side, a high side MOSFET to V-Core. You cannot do this injecting voltage between V-Core and ground because you'll just destroy the device. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. And just be careful out there, as I say. You can only do this when you're trying to find a short in the high side. If you're not sure, don't put more than 0.8 volts into a GPU, no matter what you think you're doing, yeah? If you're sure of what you're doing, yes, this is safe. You can put as much voltage in as you can get in there to get the thing hot. 
if you have a power supply that will deliver enough current into the short, that is. Okay, guys, hope you all like that one. That was a short one for me, uh, and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.